What's going on everyone, my name is Tenebris Infinite and welcome to 8 Tips and Tricks for the Road to Vostok demo. Road to Vostok sets you in Finland with little knowledge of what's happened, just one repeated message being broadcasted. Stay clear of the border zone. Since we're in the demo, we don't have much of a choice in the matter, but it doesn't mean we can't use this time with RTV in its early stages to learn about the game and have some fun with the systems at play. From procedural weapon handling, to messing with the AI, to maintaining stamina, and a ton more. So if you enjoy this video, maybe consider subscribing to stick around. First things first, let's go through the basics of health and healing. In the demo, we have 100 health, and each time we're shot, we lose 25 health. So just 4 shots until we're dead, which can happen pretty quickly. Luckily enough, there's pea soup. This Finnish tradition serves much more purpose than just being a source of food. Each use of pea soup will heal 10% of your health. So if you intend to fight around in the demo for a long time, you might want to take a couple runs through the map to gather up some cans of soup to heal with. You'll be able to move quicker and more efficiently with some of the tricks later on in this video, and gathering a bunch of these cans will be a quick and easy grind before you get to testing. The next set of tips are all focused around hip firing, which has a pretty unique approach in Road to Vostok, where holding up your gun to hip fire drains arm stamina, much like aiming down a scope would in other FPS games. In order to hip fire, you have to scroll up on the mouse wheel. Once you've done that, you could fire your, your gun as you would normally, but now you'll have to keep your arm stamina in mind. As that drains, your character's aim will sway more until a certain point where you're basically doing figure eights around the target. There's a lot more that goes into managing your arm stamina too that we'll cover in the next set of tips, but the sway can really impact your aim, especially while moving. Arm stamina is barely affected by semi-auto, but full auto will drain your arm stamina rather quickly, which is something to keep in mind. If you unload a full mag from the 416, you drain almost 30% of your stamina from the full auto alone, which means, realistically, while hit firing, you have one mag worth of accurate aim before you're going to be more off target than you'd maybe like to be. Now, here's a fun little quick tip. Switching weapons is a good way to regain your arm stamina, especially because your weapon will be down when you swap, giving you a few more seconds to regain your stamina, and then you can follow up potentially with a couple shots from your secondary. Hip firing's really effective at close quarters. You might want to use the laser to aim to begin with, but eventually once you've found a good weapon position, you'll be able to know the general area of where your hip fire will be landing. And when you're going to fight in full auto, try to use short bursts so that that way you aren't burning off too much arm stamina. Managing and maintaining your arm stamina is going to be an integral piece of Road to Vostok's combat, so learning this system in the demo is going to pay off a ton when we get to the later stages of Demo 2 and beyond that. Now, speaking of stamina, let's talk about body stamina and some movement tips in the demo here. Road to Vostok has two states of running in the game, one being like a light jog and the other being more of a full tilt run. The jog will drain your body stamina slowly and will only drain your arm stamina when you reach zero body stamina with a weapon in your hands. But running full tilt will drain both your body and your arm stamina slowly, again only while having a weapon equipped. Once you hit zero body stamina though, your character gets exhausted, which then makes your arm stamina plummet, and it will only regain itself once you let your character catch their breath for a second. A really freaking neat system, man. You'll want to keep this in mind while moving quickly, because again, if your arms are exhausted then you'll not be shooting as accurately as you want to. So often, if you're going to do a full tilt run, you might want to put your weapon away while you do. Another thing to keep in mind is your step height and distance. When you're walking or jogging you have a normal step, but when you're running at full tilt, which takes a second to wind up due to the character inertia, you'll be able to step across gaps and up a much more significant amount. 
A good way to practice this is by using the inclining slopes that are in the tutorial area and trying to run up the slope until you get to the final slope and then climbing up that at the end. It's a good way to kind of learn how far your character's stepping and how high they're stepping as well. The next one is transferring inertia into your crouch. If you get a run in with your character's full sprint speed, you can crouch and have a few moments of quick crouch movement to get to cover or under obstacles quickly. And lastly, you can crouch while jumping and your character will crouch when they hit the ground, again being a form of getting to cover quickly in the game. So let's quickly show all this movement and stamina management off so you can see it all in motion here in the game. It's really clean, especially when you start using this in conjunction with proper arm stamina management for hip firing, plus some of the tricks later on, you'll pretty much be flying around the map here. But for the next tip, let's try to stay grounded with a couple good sniping locations around the demo area. The first of which being the spot where you could find the Mosin. This roof is a great spot, though you do have to get used to using the cover that's provided. It's also a pretty cool spot because this is our first look at what hidden guns will be like around the maps of Area 5 and Vostok, with set pieces and unique vantages. I dig it, man. And the second sniping spot is kind of like hard mode because you have even less cover than the roof and more difficult shots to make. But if you enjoy a challenge, then it's just on top of the rocks and behind the power array. Still, it's a really good spot to get used to taking longer range shots with cover and stuff in the way. The next tip is to look for buried caches. These are loot sources that randomly generate in various locations across your map when you load in. This is something we actually discussed in a video the other day, but it's a fun way to find something to hunt for in the map. They're a bluish box that's covered by a bunch of shrubbery, and in them as of right now you could find the Mosin. But I'm really stoked to see how these will expand over time. From new weapons to healing items, I think ground caches will play a pretty big role in the game as we move on. Okay, so now for a fun one I haven't seen many people take advantage of yet. How to use the item placement system. In order to pick up an item, you use G. Then, from there, if you use scroll on the mouse wheel, you can move the item forward or backwards. This is pretty helpful for making neat stacks of items. But another cool thing you can do is press right mouse, and this will let you spin the item. You can use this to make guns horizontal to you, which is going to be great for when we have weapon racks in the future to place them on. But for now, you can use this to place guns down nicely for screenshots or filming. Now for the really fun stuff, the tricks. These are things I'm sure will be patched out or balanced along the way, but for now, here's a collection of fun glitchy things that you could do in the game. From skipping reloads to infinite stamina, me and the folks in my streams have been able to come up with some kind of ridiculous things you could do in this game. The first one is kind of hit and miss, pun intended. Shown to me by one of the main dudes on the channel, Tyler, this is a fun trick that basically makes you invincible with a kind of heavy asterisk. So if you crouch while the AI is shooting at you and you're both on relatively similar heights, the AI has a very hard time aiming downward. So you can kind of vibe and let the AI have stormtrooper aim while you have a bathroom break from testing or something. But if you get them to follow you while doing this, 
they really get into it. The next trick is having infinite arm stamina while sprinting. It wouldn't be a proper Tenebris Infinite Tips video without at least one infinite thing. So if you press the sprint button and hold it for a short second, then let go of it and keep doing this with a bit of a rhythm, you can sprint at full speed just using momentum all while keeping your arm stamina full. This lets you go full speed while fighting, and though it takes a little getting used to, you kind of need to pay attention to your stamina to be sure that you're keeping good rhythm, it's crazy overpowered in this demo. You need to be a little careful though, as it does glitch your camera, so you wind up lowering to the ground while your, play, uh, your character's hitbox stays normal, and also it has a high chance of clipping you beneath the map too, but... I'm just stoked I finally get to live out my dream of becoming Snake Man. That monster can go more than 300 miles per hour. But Metal Gear jokes aside, it's actually really efficient to do this kind of short burst sprint thing. And when we start having bigger maps, if this one survives, it'll be very useful for exploring. Though due to its kind of haxy nature and glitchiness, I, I doubt this one will last too long. The next trick is still kind of in the sussing out stages, but there might be a bun benefit, a benefit, whoa, a benefit to bunny hopping. It does seem to save a few frames along the way, which all adds up, maybe in the future of Vostok if it's speed runnable. I mean, I even kind of messed up my flow around the end and I still wound up getting through the demo transition, uh, maybe I think it was 13 frames faster or something like that, so who knows, man. The last trick comes in from a new viewer, Finisipin. My dude, cheers and thank you for the trick. So what you do is you swap weapons and you can skip things like reloading or bolting, taking the infinite ammo of the demo to a whole nother level. This lets you turn bolt action weapons into borderline semi-auto weapons, which is bizarre, but a ton of fun to muck around with. And for the last couple tips here, just a few ideas on different runs you can do through the village map to keep the demo fun and enjoyable for yourself while we wait for further updates. The first idea is one I did in my latest stream for Road to Vostok, where you go out with nothing on you and you try to hunt for a Mosin from a ground cache, so you can't take the easy road with the Mosin on the roof, then try to survive for as long as you can. It's pretty intense, even in these early stages, and might just give you a small idea of what Vostok could possibly be like in the full game proper. This one requires a bit of map knowledge with knowing where the stashes spawn, so try to maybe do a few test runs to get a good feel for the areas you might see the caches in. The next idea is to go out and hunt for a specific item and try to fill your inventory with it. Now, I'm using the red cans for example, but they're actually really tough to find, so look at the rarity of each color and it'll give you an idea for how long you'll have to hunt to fill up your inventory. This one's not quite as fun as the first or last idea, but it still gives you something to do and a reason to enter the houses beyond simple exploration as a kind of bigger benefit. And the last idea is to raid the map Tarkov style. Shoutouts to all the Turkey? Why did you autocorrect a turkey? Jesus. And the last idea is to raid the map Tarkov style. Shoutouts to all the Tarky boyos out there, but all you do is go in with just a Glock, try to take out an AI and get their RK, and then from there take down as many AI as you can. If you manage to extract and hit a transition point, you keep your stuff and refill your health. But if you die while out there, you gotta empty your inventory and try again. This, again, might actually be a good window into how Road to Vostok will be, as we know while you're on the side of Area 5, you will lose your whole inventory on death. And on the Vostok side, 
your entire freaking save file. So this might, again, be a good look at what the game will be like someday down the road to Vostok. <laughs> so there you folks go. Eight tips and tricks for Road to Vostok. Hopefully you all enjoyed. If you have any tips you'd like to share, please do so in the comment section down below. But for now, thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.